I'm in the graphics business, and this topic, when Jeff was developing it, we discussed it because it was part of the men's club thing, and we, we said, how do you put a, put a name to it? So the name that finally came amongst a group of us and was well writ written by a, another fellow wordsmith was where profession meets faith. So I, will, uh, I, I always fought it with the idea, we always have our own internal uh, feelings. And I said, okay, I'll try to give you some examples of something that I've done that is religious. Because when I am out as a salesperson, I'm trying to provide a, a worthy service. I'm not suggesting that we should be more Christian. I'm just suggesting here's the way you achieve what you're doing. Well, I have two little companies. Um, and some 25 years ago when I came back to Chicago, I had the amb ambition or the entrepreneurial uh, spirit thinking that I'll have my own company. Well, you know, I'd, you got to make a buck, so I, what I could do is I could sell. And I certainly knew something about printing. So uh, among the things we had done some years ago was to purchase a, um, a photo lab. And the photo lab used to be uh, popular and used because models and actors and PR people need pictures. And so we took pictures, and um, the unfortunate thing is, happily with production in, in the last 10 or 15 years, is the internet now supplies the pictures. So there's virtually, while there were 12 very fine photo labs in Chicago, now there are two. And my competitor says, John, I'm just waiting for you to, to retire. And I'm saying, Jerry, I'm waiting for you. And so it, it goes back and forth. But I did bring a couple of samples of something that I really enjoy. And uh, I say that as a, somewhat of a prelude. Um, here's a photo that was taken. And it wasn't a great photo, but it was a, it was a nice photogenic picture. And we enhanced it because it was with a small photo. Now, this happens to be my daughter and my granddaughter, so uh, I'm somewhat proud of it. But what we ended up doing, because what I, what I end up doing is, some of you know, I've, I've sold citrus and I've done things with the rotary. We took that same picture and then created a poster and an entire campaign. So for me, I'm just not a salesperson. I'm the back end of, a, of an ad agency that really takes an idea and runs it through. Well, that's wonderful unless the business is going south. And uh, we know what going south means. And, uh, you know. uh, so one, one idea we had was, well, let's make note cards. And we'll take the same photos from models and actors. And, um, and everybody has Christmas cards. But there's a, you, know, you have to get on the internet. Well, yours is one of our first note cards. It happens to be my sister. Well, thank goodness I have seven sisters. So we'll, we'll get some work. <laughs> the note cards have gone all right, but they haven't, we haven't, I, I, I will not uh, be threatening the Apple computer for their uh, uh, well-doing. But Jeff, I really did bring two examples where profession did meet faith. While I was doing the juvenile diabetes uh, shirts uh, for Ron Santos Walk, and I was very pleased to be doing it, the lady in the Area said, well, we're having a reunion. I said, no problem. We, we do t-shirts for families, and we just had a family reunion. She says, well, I like the names on it, but I also like the Holy Spirit on it. And I said, well, I've never done the Holy Spirit. Uh, well, not what they look like. I wasn't going. But she showed me this very, you know, now these are t-shirts, so you have to have something that looks colorful and creative. But you also have to be practical, because... She only wanted to spend six dollars. She didn't want to have a Rembrandt on her, on her chest. So uh, I first, my first rendering was a uh, just a turtle dove, and she said, "Well, that's that's good, but can you give him something else?" So this is my interpretation of the Holy Spirit, and uh, I hope you can see it on the on the camera there. But at least I can say, Jeff, we we did create something in faith. But the most important thing, and more seriously, uh, I was really proud of among the small things we've done, is that in this centennial year of this church, um, I always took umbrage with um, the banner that's out at, over the, over the uh, front of the church at Easter because they're, they're saying Christ is risen, but you can't see it. So I 
told Father Pirtle, what we really need is a banner. What we really need is something that is visible and stands out. So, um, I don't claim credit for this, but I'm the guy who did it. And so I came up with the idea of proclaiming Christ. And I think that's what we as Catholics want to do. And so this, of course, you might have seen it for a few months, and I hope it comes back up. Uh, and we'll see whether it goes on. But the talk that I wanted to talk about, and I'll start it now, is really the frustration and the struggle that I have had and that others have in this little thing, this journey of life. Um, there are many dimensions to our lives. Uh, one is certainly a spiritual one. One is a financial dimension. One is our kind of mental well-being. There's a social, which is obviously family-related. Um, but we all have ways of compartmentalizing and uh, focusing on how we keep ourselves fit both mentally and physically. I was lucky, as so many others have been here, to have had and learned a little bit of the Baltimore Catechism. And one of the things that I learned, you can repeat right here. Because when we say out loud, why did God make me? Almost everyone here, I bet, can say to know him, to love him, and to serve him on this earth and in the next, which brings to us and to me the focal point of our lives. The big picture for which we live is to get to heaven. So, Mary, let me suggest, just recently I heard, and I really love the idea, the important day is not when one is born, but when one is born to eternal life. So, I can think of one person very dear to me. And on that day, some 14 years ago, she was born to eternal life. So, that's a, a powerful idea. And I, and I think that's what we all strive for. We all do it. Um, how, I, how I hope to get there is a little bit like my friend Emmett. But we all get there in a different way. Um, some years ago, I realized that uh, I had just gotten married and I really enjoyed life so much that I had gained a few extra pounds. So vanity was coming on to this super salesperson. I said, okay, I'll try running a little bit. And I'll run a little bit. And I wrote it down just because I thought it was fun. And it becomes a slight little game. Okay, I'll run a mile. Run a mile and a half. Maybe two miles. How many miles will I get this week? Well, that was about 30 years ago. <laughs> and also about 15,000 miles ago. But if you do a little every day, you can achieve it. Now, I'm going to tell you, I, I, I don't really like running. I, it's painful. I dislike it. But it is a discipline that really helps every one of us. And if we do something like that, then there's little games you can play. You can say, well, I can say, maybe if I do a mile, I can do a a decade as a rosary. And actually, I, if I do a mile and a half, I can do like three decades as a rosary. And if I do two miles, I can knock out a rosary. Now, so I recently, in recent years, I had to had a little goals and I built the goals up. And so I can run on a daily basis two miles. It's painful, I don't like it, but I can say a rosary. So you get a physical, uh, not a high, because I don't like running, <laughs> but I, I, can, I can do it, and it works. So that works for me. And I, like everyone else, we hope something you find can work for you. Well, about six or seven years ago, I, I never would have said it, but I'll tell you the truth. I was very fortunate, like so many of us, others. There were a couple guys running around here thinking that we ought to have an adoration chapel. And I'm saying, you're nuts. Yeah, like everybody else, 24-7. Well, the idea occurred to me, maybe I wouldn't run on Sunday morning and I would trade it off because maybe I could say the rosary at the chapel. <laughs> well, we started that and I really liked running only six days a week. So we get a little variety. But importantly, more importantly, and I'm, I'm being serious now, is that I can say the rosary 
and I can read at the Adoration Chapel nice stories about saints and how others have sacrificed or put themselves out of their way and shared their lives. I think of the nuns and the priests of the 40s and 50s and 60s who totally gave their lives to the training. And now we no longer have the nuns in school. I'm grateful that my wife is a teacher, just like you are, of your daughter at, at, uh, in our Catholic schools. And it's those kind of dedicated people who work for far less than any other others in the public schools. But the maturity and the charity and the giving and the youth that develop uh, is it's just remarkable. And it's a, it's a great token to them. Lastly, I think you've had enough, but I, lastly of my stories is somewhere along the line, my father or our family, we would go to Mass for birthdays, which was a nice idea because uh, we had ten kids, so it was a lot, of, a lot of birthdays to go to. But it was relatively easy, and we were relatively close to church, and we were fortunate enough to have mass every day. I went to Vietnam and I've gone to other places throughout the world and I've seen towns and villages without a priest, without the, the good fortune of, of mass of any kind. So I think that we are extremely lucky just here with four different priests. More importantly is that over a period of a, a, a few years you can actually understand and hear and, and, and and pick up the entire Bible and understand what we as Christians are supposed to be doing. So uh, my trick or my game to balance out the frustration of this world that I live in, many people are struggling, even here, downtown, but we all have the faith. We're all on the same road or the same path. We're just trying to get to heaven but between now and then, I'd like to at least pay the bills so, and live with a level of stress that I can handle, or at least that keeps us going. And the way we do that is certainly Mass, certainly the Rosary, and certainly the Adoration Chapel. So Emmett, do you think we gave a, a good, strong pitch? <laughs> That's our story. We're sticking with it.